researchers have power, right? They have the they have this really powerful tool to unearth rich insights, which otherwise would just be lost. Um, and not just what is happening, but why it's happening and how it's happening. Um, so one kind of big chunk of that is as um, you know, we have um, for generative AI, we have tools to bring rich insights in throughout the entire AI pipeline, right? Whether that's data set curation, evaluation, deployment, use cases, post-deployment iteration. Um, as an example, a lot of current evaluations of uh, AI models are automated. Like for example, looking at whether what is being produced is toxic or not, for example. Um, and a lot of toxicity classifiers have inbuilt assumptions of, you know, toxicity that is very narrowly defined, that is only toxic in like certain communities in let's say the US, but as a qualitative researcher, you can actually help build out evaluations that consider um, social context when thinking about toxicity, because you as a researcher have worked in, um, have recognized how, do, how these things differ, you know, in different parts of the world. Um, so kind of recognizing that there are limits to a lot of the way, a lot of the kind of automated, um, you know, classifiers in this case, uh, or evaluation techniques or data set curation techniques. Um, so we need qualitative research as foundational knowledge of like, you know, what's going wrong, what is offensive, what is the cultural meaning of um, a lot of these generative AI outputs. Um, and then we also have ex expertise, I think in, and so as, as kind of a, a pushback on this automator as a way to, um, uh, you know, add to these automated measures, a lot of companies are now also using what they're calling like human feedback um, into their development pipeline. And basically what that is, is, you know, in Prague, you know, you know this really well, it's annotators or micro task workers who are given um, a list of questions and they just have to say like, yes, this is toxic. Yes, this is offensive. No, this is not offensive. Um, but as qualitative researchers, we know that the answers to a lot of these questions change based on who you ask, what you ask, how you ask it. And so as we can actually design much better human in the loop evaluation guidelines um, than what is being considered right now, because we will think much more deeply about our sample, we'll think much more deeply about the questions being asked, we'll think much more deeply of the limitations of some of these almost survey-like, you know, 